Hey everybody, um, welcome to episode 16, One and Only Ivan. We are getting to the really critical, awesome part of this book. Um, in the last episode, we heard about the animals being helped. Um, their, their plight was understood. The protesters, along with Julia and her work to understand Ivan's message and put it on the billboard, attracted attention. And now there were adults that came in to and see the conditions that the animals were in and to move them to a much safer spot. We think they're going to the zoo. But since we're hearing this from the animal's perspective, we're not quite sure yet. So in the last scene, um, Ivan gave Noptag to Bob because it was uncertain whether Bob would be coming along. They didn't think that he would be and they thought they were saying goodbye. So this chapter starts on page uh, 259. It's called Good Boy. Good boy, Ivan, good boy, Maya says, when I lumber into my box, I hear the clicker and I'm rewarded with a tiny marshmallow. When I'm settled, Maya gives me a sweet drink that tastes of mango and something bitter. My eyelids grow heavy. I want to see what happens next, but I'm sleepy, so sleepy. I dream I'm with Tag and we're swinging from vines while Stella watches. The sun slices through the, click, the thick ceiling of trees and the breeze tastes like fruit. Okay, I think this is where we actually left off. This is called moving. My eyes flutter open. The box is moving. I'm in a grumbling belly of some great beast. I fall back to sleep. Awakening. I awake to glass and steel. It's a new cage, not like my old cage, except it's much cleaner. Maya's here and the other humans I recognize. Hey there, Ivan, Maya says. He's coming too, guys. I have three walls of glass. The fourth wall is a curtain of wood slats strung together. This doesn't look like the zoos on TV. Where are all the other animals? Where are the gorillas? Is this where Ruby ended up? In a cage, just like her old cage, still alone? Is she cold, hungry, sad? Is there anyone to tell her stories when she can't get to sleep? Missing. I miss my old cozy cage. I miss my art, but most of all, I miss Bob. My belly's cold without him. Food. The food here is fine. No soda though, or cotton candy. Not famous. I have no visitors here. No sticky finger children or weary parents. Only Maya and her humans come with their soothing voices and soft hands. I wonder if I have stopped being famous. <laughs> I think that's funny. This is called Something in the Air. Endless days passed, and then I noticed something, a change. I don't know what it is, but I taste it in the air like far off rain clouds gathering. A new TV. Maya brings me a TV. It's bigger than my old one. She turns it on. I, I think you're gonna like the show, she says, smiling. I'm hoping for a romance or maybe a Western, but it's a nature show, one without human voices or ads. It's a show about gorillas being gorillas. I watch them eat and groom and play fight. I even watch them sleep. I wonder why Mac never put on this channel. The family. Every day I watch the gorillas on the TV screen. It's a small family, an odd one, just three females and a juvenile male without a silverback to protect them. They groom each other and eat and sleep and then groom each other some more. They're a contented group, contented meaning happy in a kind of a mellow way, placid and good natured. Placid means calm. Although like any family, they bicker from time to time. <clears throat> excited. This morning, for some reason, there is no gorilla show on TV. Maya and the other humans are excited. They chirp like birds at dawn. Today's the day, they say. I've watched many humans watch me, but never have they looked so happy. <clears throat> Maya goes to the wall of slats. She grins goofily. She pulls a string. What I see gorillas. 
three females and a juvenile male. It's the family I've been watching, but they're not on a TV screen. They're on the other side of the glass watching me, watching them. I see me, lots of me. Still there. I cover my eyes. I look again. They are still there. Watching. Every day I watch them through my window, the way visitors used to watch me. See how they chase, groom, see how they play, sleep, see how they live. They're graceful the way Stella was, moving just enough, only as much as they need. They stare at me, heads tilted, pointing and hooting. And I wonder, are they as fascinated by me as I am by them? This one's called She. Her hoots make my ears hurt. I admire her intact canines from afar. Her name is Kenyani. She is faster than I am, spry and probably smarter, although I am twice her size. And that too is important. She is terrifying, a beautiful and beautiful, like a painting that moves. Door. Today, the humans lead me to a door. On the other side, Kinyani and the others wait for me. I'm not ready for this. I'm, I'm not ready to be a silverback. I'm Ivan, just Ivan, only Ivan. I decide it's not a good day to socialize. I'll try again tomorrow. Wondering. All night, I lie awake wondering about Ruby. Has she already walked through the door like the one I'm facing? Was she as scared as I am? Scared the way she must have been that day she fell in the hole? I think of Ruby's endless curiosity and of the questions she loved to ask. Have you ever danced with a tiger, Ivan? Will your fur turn blue? Why doesn't that little boy have a tail? If Ruby were here with me, she'd be asking, What's on the other side of the door, Ivan? Ruby would want to know, and she would have been, and she would have been through that door by now. This part's called ready. Want to try again today, Ivan? Maya asks. I think of Ruby and I tell myself it's time. The door opens. This section's called Outside at Last. Sky, grass, tree, ant, stick, bird, dirt, cloud, wind, flower, rock, rain, mime, mime, mime. Oh, I love that section. Can I show it to you? Isn't that beautiful? It's like a whole chapter. Oops. I sniff, approach, strut a bit, but the others don't welcome me. They have sharp teeth and loud voices. Did I do something wrong? Kinyani chases me. She throws a stick at me. She corners me. I know she's testing me to see if I'm a true silverback, one who can protect her family. I cower and hide my eyes. Cower means to kind of duck away. Maya lets me back into my cage. This chapter is called, What It Was Like. I lay awake and try to remember what it was like being a gorilla. How did we move? How did we touch? How did we know who was boss? I try to think of the past, the babies and the motorbikes and the popcorn and the short pants. I try to imagine Ivan as he might've been pretending. The juvenile male approaches. He's eyeing my food hungrily. I imagine a different Ivan, my father's son. I grumble and swat and swagger. I beat my chest till the whole world hears. Kinyani watches and so do others. I move toward the young upstart and he retreats, almost as if he believes I'm the silverback I'm pretending to be. Nest. I'm making a nest on the ground. 
It isn't a true jungle nest. The leaves are inferior and the sticks are brittle. They snap when I weave them into place. The others watch, grunting their disapproval. Too small, too flimsy, an ugly thing to see. But when I climb into that leafy cradle, it's like floating on treetop mist. More similes. Okay, I think we've got time for one more. More TV. Maya wants me to go back to my glass cage. I can tell because she's tempting me toward the door with a trail of tiny marshmallows. I try to ignore her. I don't want to leave the outside. It's a cloudless day and I have found just the right spot for a nap. But I relent when she adds yogurt raisins to the trail. <laughs> she knows my weaknesses all too well. In the glass cage, the TV's on. It's another nature show, jerky and unfocused. I expect to see gorillas, but none appear. I hear a shrill sound like a toy trumpet. My heart quickens. I rush to close the screen and there she is, Ruby. She's rolling in a lovely pool of mud with two other young elephants. Another elephant approaches. She towers over Ruby. She strokes Ruby and nudges her. She makes soft noises. They stand side by side, just the way Stella and Ruby used to. Their trunks entwine. Entwine means to wrap around one another. I see something new in Ruby's eyes and I know what it is. It's joy. I watch the whole thing and then Maya plays it again for me and again. At last, she turns off the TV and carries it out of the cage. I put my hand to the glass. Maya looks over. Thank you. I try to say it with my eyes. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Boy, that last little section got me a little bit teary. That's um, so touching that now we know that Ivan is in a situation where he's adjusting to joining a new group and in a much bigger enclosure with um, others who are like him and that the, the zookeepers know, the doctors know, the vets know that when they show Ivan um, tape of Ruby happy that he understands that. Okay, we probably have one more uh, episode until the end of One and Only Ivan, but there's more to know at the end. We're gonna explore a little bit more background about this story. All right, friends, uh, that's all for today.